like to assure you that this time hard work and loyalty will be rewarded adequately. President Buhari promises reward for hard work and loyalty. As long as we continue to subsidize products, subsidize uh, this, uh, create very um, market on friendly type taxes, you're going to continue to struggle. As the petroleum industry presents scorecard, stakeholders commend present administration for sustainable growth in the sector. Senate passes bill for speedy completion of a Jaukuta steel company. And Information Minister charges critical stakeholders in the information sector to evolve strategies to combat fake news and hate speech. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Cyril Stober in Abuja. Also reading tonight is Jennifer Egwin Lagos and Naomi Aboku joins us from Maiduguri. President Muhammad Buhari has assured his supporters and other members of the All Progressives Congress that this time hard work and loyalty will be rewarded adequately. The president was speaking at the launch of another support group for his re-election in 2019 tagged Together Nigeria Group. State House correspondent Aliu Kabir reports. Together Nigeria Group is an integral part of Buhari's support organization aimed at supporting the re-election of President Muhammad Buhari in the forthcoming February general elections. Amidst party supporters at the gathering, President Muhammad Buhari expressed appreciation for the support he has been receiving from Nigerians through the Buhari support organization and told them in confidence that more developmental programs are underway. At this point, I would like to acknowledge whose overwhelming support I enjoy from individuals and organizations across the country over the years. I say thank you to all those who contributed to our successes in one way or the other. Some of you individuals and organizations may be feeling disappointed because we have not been able to please everyone. I would like to assure you that this time hard work and loyalty will be rewarded adequately. The president expressed optimism with the strategy put in place by the BSO towards his re-election in the forthcoming February polls and asked them to sustain the tempo for the overall development of Nigeria. I have listened and I acknowledge with delight the story of Buhari support organization, past, present and future from previous speakers. In particular, I commend the plan to organize and reposition the organization towards the forthcoming election and beyond. This has once again given me further encouragement, hope and optimism in our political journey. APC stakeholders and other stalwarts cutting across the length and breadth of this country, as well as Nigerian artists comprising musicians and film actors and the Super Eagle X players, reaffirmed their determination in projecting the image of the country to ensure victory of President Buhari come 2019. Your Excellency, these support groups believe in you, believe in your ideologies, believe in your selfless service, which is why we continue to register. We know the roads, we know what we need to do. Our campaign is going to strictly be based on the methodical process of getting the people to understand what is the difference between the good and the bad. I'm seeing these people very fresh, ready to embark on another journey to ensure that President Muhammad Buhari gets elected in 2019 so that we consolidate the good work that President Muhammad Buhari has done for this country since 2015. 
Together, Nigeria is not about abusing anybody, but projecting the activity of this administration and telling every Nigerian that the way to go. I voted for Buhari three and a half years ago or some plus because this was a candidate that brought something to the table that was unique. He's incorruptible. I not only voted for Buhari at the last election, I followed exactly what he's been doing and I am satisfied. And there is need for that continuity. We are not blind. We know what is going on. And we are for Buhari. Together, Nigeria. The wife of the president, who is a pillar of support to the group, presented an award to the Nigerian artist, a recognition of their selfless service to the country, particularly their support and believing in the policies and programs of the Buhari-led administration. From the State House, Ali Kabir, NTA News. And with barely 64 days to the 2019 general elections, President Mohamed Buhari says he is committed to ensuring that all security agencies perform their constitutional obligation in a strictly professional and impartial manner with a view to guaranteeing the security of all citizens during and after the general elections. The president, who was represented by the secretary to the government of the Federation, stated this at the election security management workshop organized by the Office of the National Security Advisor. The workshop is organized for officers of the armed forces, the police and other security agencies whose performance are critical to the successful conduct of the 2019 general elections. President Muhammadu Buhari, who was represented by the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, urged the participants to take advantage of the workshop to enhance their professionalism. This workshop is therefore a right and well-informed action that would undoubtedly advance our vision in this regard. National Security Advisor noted that in the past, there were concerns within and outside the country on challenges on the capacity of law enforcement agencies deployed on electoral operations as well as operational issues, touching on synergy amongst law enforcement agencies. This development, according to him, results majorly on the wide knowledge gap of security agencies on the professional requisites for election security management in a democratic setting, a gap this training intends to fill. Neutrality, operational efficiency, patriotism, and professionalism will be the watchwords of all security agencies. Chairman Independent National Electoral Commission observed that police remains the lead agency in the conduct of election in Nigeria and called for synergy from all key players to ensure free, fair, and credible elections. Other security agencies will continue to play roles outside the voting areas and consistent with the clearly defined rules of engagement. Our armed forces will only uh, will remain completely and totally apolitical come 2019. When we work together by sharing intelligence and manpower that we can better deliver credible elections. With the theme Pathway to a credible electoral process in Nigeria, the workshop is designed as a train-the-trainer model to ensure that officers who participate can return to their agencies and transfer the knowledge to be gained and undertake on-the-job orientation for their colleagues. President Buhari says the federal government will neither accept nor tolerate the reported cases of denial and violation of the rights, benefits and job security of Nigerians by multinational oil companies operating in the country. This was while granting audience to the national executive members of the National Union of Petroleum and Natural Gas Workers, NUPENG. The president therefore directed the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources to take immediate steps towards ensuring compliance with the nation's Local Content Development Act. State House correspondent Adam Musambu reports. 
the newly inaugurated executive members of Nupeng were in the State House to confer on President Muhammad Buhari an award of Grand Comrade of the Nation's Oil and Gas Productive Workers. This is in recognition of his genuine commitment and devotion to a new Nigeria that adequately protects and provides for her citizens. President Buhari thanked the union for not only the honor done to him, but also the unflinching support being demonstrated to his administration since coming to power, thereby contributing to the uninterrupted supply of petroleum products to consumers across Nigeria. May I therefore use this opportunity to request that you continue on this patriotic path. On the union's outcry over what it calls indecent and precarious employment practices by multinational oil companies, the president requested for specific petitions on the matter with facts saying the nation's content development act specified clearly the local content requirements including manpower for all projects and contracts in the petroleum sector and this must be respected. I will direct the Honourable Minister of State Petroleum Resources to review the issues and take appropriate action to ensure compliance with Act by operators in the industry. We are working hard to make our business environment easier and friendlier for investors. Therefore, in drafting any petition, I would ask that your submissions are supported with facts. President Buhari also promised to ensure that the ongoing petroleum industrial reforms aimed at unlocking the numerous untapped potentials for the nation have the best interests of Nigeria and Nigerians as its core objectives. Such reforms cannot and must not be rushed if we must get it right. Whatever decision we take now will impact either negatively or positively on generations to come. I also assure you that at the end, we will have a bill that the nation will be proud of. While promising not to relent in creating an inclusive and diversified economy, the president said innovative ideas that will bring new refineries into the country are welcomed, while peaceful engagements with oil producing communities will continue, stating, however, the government's readiness to respond to any hostile acts of sabotage. National President of Nupeng, William Zaporeha, who made a wide range of suggestions aimed at enhancing the oil industry, applauded President Muhammad Buhari for stopping the bleeding of Nigeria from what he described as the various gunshots of corruption and his attendant malfeasance, thereby putting the nation back on the path to recovery and sustainable future. We wish to formally affirm it, and we are very proud of your parallel achievement of pulling our country out of recession silently and rigorously laying some foundation for a new Nigeria of fiscal discipline and prosperity for all. We urge you to relentlessly continue the good work you are doing for our great country. The entire productive workers of the Nigeria oil and gas industry therefore wish you victorious 2019. The present executive members of Nupeng came on board on the 6th of April 2018. From the State House, Adamu Sambu. NTA News. And staying in the oil sector, sustainable efforts in petroleum product supply network in the country have been commended with President Buhari giving assurance of reforms in the oil and gas sector. This was at the presentation of the scorecard of the Ministry of Petroleum Resources in the last three years in Abuja. Energy correspondent Lydia Samson reports that the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, stood in for the President. The Nigerian oil and gas sector, like the global oil market, has had the challenges and recorded fluctuations in prices. To change the narrative, a roadmap outlining new forms to add seven big wins was inaugurated by President Mohamed Buhari. The agencies under the ministry have also recorded tremendous achievements in the execution of their various mandates. It is pertinent to mention also that within the period under review, 
There were sustainable efforts in petroleum product availability. Minister of State Petroleum Resources, Emmanuel Ibekachuku, says he will be leading teams from the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, and financiers of NNPC refineries to resume negotiations and fast-track repairs of refineries in the country. As long as we continue to subsidize products, subsidize uh, this, uh, create very um, market on friendly type taxes, you're going to continue to struggle. So we need to find a way that we meet the needs uh, the need to provide uh, products sufficiently for the populace and at the same time be able to free the sector to grow. Key players in the oil and gas sector said much has been achieved in oil diplomacy and in entrenchment of transparency in the sector under President Muhammadu Buhari. They are unanimous that the reforms initiated in the sector have started yielding fruits with more investor confidence and commitment to invest in Nigeria's oil and gas sector. In Abuja, Lydia Samson, NTA News. And from the legislature now, Senate has passed the bill for an act to provide funds for the speedy completion of the Ajaukuta Steel Company. National Assembly correspondent Ignatius Unquo reports that the House of Representatives had passed the bill last week. The bill, which originated from the House of Representatives, was referred from the floor straight to the Committee of the Whole because of its urgency. The passage of the bill in the Senate also received accelerated consideration as well. The bill that seeks to give legal backing to the presidential amnesty program, the Niger Delta, also received concurrence. Including the provision, acquisition, improvement, and replacement of other capital assets required. For not only industrial takeoff, but ensuring the, um, the development of our country going forward. So I think that this... Um, a good day for our country that these two bills have been able to be completed both at the Senate and the House and uh, it's now ready for presidential assent. The bill for an act to repeal the Nuclear Safety and Radiation Protection Act and reenact the Nuclear Safety, Security and Safeguards Bill sponsored by Senator Donald Alao Shadora was passed for second reading. To enable the safe, secure and peaceful use of nuclear technology and once it has been acquired we should also look at the safety that is needed in running uh, that very, very, this very important uh, energy that we are seeking to have. One of the areas you will find favor with this technology is in preservation. Senator Andrew Bass bill seeking to establish the Federal Investor of Oga Anambra State and the one for the establishment of the Federal Capital Territory Health Insurance Agency and the FCT Primary Health Care Board, sponsored by Senator Philip Aduda. We are also passed for second reading of a modern institution that will develop world-class human resources. The bill also positioned the FCT to access basic health care provision fund. Being the first city of our country, we are supposed to have an effective health delivery system. The Senate passed for first reading the bills for an act to establish the Northwest Development Commission, sponsored by Senator Barao Jibrin representing Canon North Senatorial District and the Federal Polytechnic Anyamelo Establishment Bill sponsored by Senator Stella Odua from Anambra North from the National Assembly Ignatius Nko, NTN News. In more reports from the legislature, President Buhari has transmitted a request to the National Assembly for a joint session of the Senate and House of Representatives to present the 2019 budget proposals on Wednesday, the 19th of December, 2018. National Assembly correspondent Lami Ali reports that Speaker Yakubu Dogara read out the President's communication at Thursday's plenary. The presentation of the President's communication was greeted by reactions from some lawmakers based on alleged public comments earlier made by the Minister of Budgets and National Planning, alleging that the legislature was responsible for the delay in the presentation of the 2019 appropriation bill. House leader Femi Gwajabiamila, however, explained that the minister had called him and denied the said comments, to which the speaker ruled that the House should wait from now till Tuesday for the minister's personally signed retraction before taking a resolution on the matter. If there is a rejoinder saying that he was misquoted or he never said those things and is not proven, then honestly, honestly speaking, there's no need to take this matter any further. 
Thursday's plenary saw the adoption of a motion on the need to constitute a board for the Northeast Development Commission to fast-track resettlement and reconstruction in the region, as moved by Representative Mohammed Tahir Mungunu. The sum of 45 billion naira has been appropriated to the Northeast North Development Commission in the 2018 budget by the National Assembly. Also adopted was a request by Representative Jonathan Gaza for relevant authorities to arrest erosion in Karu area of Nasarawa State, while the call by Deputy Leader Ahmed Idris Wasi on the need to investigate issuance of mining license to local miners who connive with foreigners to engage in illegal mining was also adopted. The loss of over 100 billion naira later uh, of government revenue based on assessment estimates as a result of the such illegal mining activities in that location just for a single company. Four bills passed second reading including a bill for an act to make provisions of first aid kits compulsory in vehicles and buildings sponsored by Representative Kendi Agbola and that of Representative Sajos Ogun which seeks to regulate international studies for children or wards of Nigerian public office holders. A situation when an assistant director is training seven children overseas. Mr. Speaker, how much is the salary? In the meantime, Chairman House Committee on Information and National Orientation, Representative Olusha Gumodebumi, presented a report on the bill seeking to amend National Broadcasting Commission Act from the National Assembly, Lami Ali, NCN. It's time now for a break. The news continues shortly. Are you all right? Hospital. All night. Oh. Emergency. We are losing her. We are losing her. Don't worry. I'll save her. Driver! What is wrong with you? Building burned down. What? It was life or death. He said fuck. I'm God. Mr. Man, wake up! Sancha! Yeah! This is Sparta! My resignation letter, sir. No Ogasi, the unrivaled big boss of data. Get 125% bonus on all data plans. Also enjoy unconditional 25% data bonus non-stop on all auto renewals. Down star triple seven hash to choose a plan. The Vice Chancellor, Professor Chinedum Ozoma Wajuba, on behalf of the Governing Council, Senate and Congregation, invites the general public to the third convocation ceremony of Alex Ekweme Federal University, Ndufu Alike Ebony State. Monday 17th December. 2018 convocation lecture by Professor Emmanuel Nadozie, venue, Bay University Auditorium, time 11 a.m. Tuesday, 18th December 2018, admission to first degrees, award of prizes and conferment of honorary degrees, venue, convocation arena, time 11 a.m. Special guest of honor, President Muhammad Buhari, announcer, Professor Sunday Elam, chairman, Senate Ceremonials Committee. As the number of picking where people they bond they reduce, now so the money with them they get to spend they increase. Enough proof done there to show say countries where them families they bond the number of picking where they fit take care of, the stress to take care of the children know they plenty at all for the family. If families fit they enjoy this kind of benefit of expenses we know they too much. You fit imagine how you go fit help boost country economy like Nigeria own. As leader where you be, the solution they your hand. And what you need to do now to take action now. All we lawmakers and everybody with the power and government must make sure say them put enough money down. We go make sure say child bread spacing. We plenty people sabi be as family planning services full everywhere. Our pastors, imam, and traditional leaders supposed to put my tell them people about the better thing where child spacing they do. This work, now a handy day. We get the full responsibility to do them. We must join hand and get it together. Make our future for bright. Now, Federal Ministry of Health, they bring you this message. The second edition of the Retao NTA Headquarters Chapter Staff Day celebration will hold on 14th December 2018. Highlights of the event include Best Staff Awards, Presentation of awards to distinguished members of the society, which will include Deputy Governor of Kanu State, Dr. Nasir Yusuf Gawuna, Abike Dabiri, Senior Special Advisor to the President on Foreign Affairs and Diaspora, Dr. Boboye Oyemi, Co-Marshal, Federal Road Safety Corps, Justice Usman Belu, F. 
FCT Chief George and others. Speakers, Onoja Isaac, pharmacist and emotional intelligence expert, Okorie Daniel, CEO, Ionized Kagem Water Limited. Venue, NTA Arena, NTA Headquarters, Area 11, Gargi Abuja. Time, 4 p.m. prompt. Join us and celebrate our staff, the pride of our organization, Great NTA Staff. This festive season, there's no place like home. Get a GoTV Dakota and GoTenna and one month of GoTV Max subscription for only 6,900 Naira. GoTV. Live it, love it. ...and my local community. Before the advent of the Empower program, I didn't really have the initiative of starting the business like this. And as it is now, everybody around the community is interested to work with me because of the value, the value addition that I've added into the business. I got some of this idea through the Empower tab, the tab that was given to us. The thing that's really helped my local community. The most important thing it's, uh, is that it has really changed the mentality of the graduates in my community. Thanks for staying with us. President Muhammad Buhari has described as not only mandatory but clearly sensible for Nigeria to render the necessary support and cooperation to member countries of the Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS. He made the declaration while playing host to a team from the ECOWAS Parliament led by its speaker, Mustafa Sise Lo. State House correspondent Adam Osambu has details. It was a thank you visit to President Muhammad Buhari by leadership of the ECOWAS Parliament having been allocated land in Abuja for the Permanent Secretariat of the Sub-Regional Legislative Body. President Buhari said with his double caps as Nigerian leader and chairman of ECOWAS assisting member countries as well as institutions of the sub-regional body is indeed mandatory. The president therefore responded positively to the various requests by the ECOWAS parliament speaker including accommodation, payment of allowances and sundry welfare issues. I assure you that uh, I will attend to these uh, problems expeditiously. Speaker Mustafa Sise noted with delight that Nigeria, under President Buhari, has led the sub-regional body admirably, applauding the Buhari administration's commitment to security and the fight against corruption. Mr. Sise said this has given them hope in the region. Also pray for your success in the forthcoming election so that you can continue with the good work that you've started. The speaker used the opportunity to formally congratulate President Muhammad Buhari for the confidence reposing him by not only the leaders of West African countries but also the entire continent and beyond. From the State House, Adam Musambo, NTA News. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed has asked information managers to evolve policies and measures that will comprehensively assist in addressing the menace of fake news and hate speech. The minister stated this in his address at the 47th National Council on Information meeting in Kaduna. Anthony Fawson reports. With the theme, tackling fake news and hate speech to enhance peace and national unity, the Information and Culture Minister, Lai Mohammed, said, with the 2019 general elections drawing near, it is expedient for the minutes to be contained, given the danger it portends to the nation. The campaign against fake news and hate speech is not just the responsibility of the federal government. It is for all tiers of government Therefore, I expect that the Honorable Commissioners who are here and those who are not here will launch the campaign 
in their various states. The media will bear the brunt if the people lose confidence in them because of fake news. It is why the media must lead the campaign. He cited example of nations whose existence was tampered with through fake news and hate speech. Kaduna State Governor Nasir Ahmed El Rufai, who was represented by his senior special assistant on media and communication, Muwa Adekeye, called for a national dialogue on checking the menace of fake news and hate speech. Therefore, any enlightened government recognizes and accepts that freedom of speech is a significant right that ought to be not only protected but encouraged. Because freedom of speech is vital to our sense of individual liberty and essential to the progress of a country. He maintained that the freedom of speech is a significant right, but it is not a right to indulge in irresponsible acts. Goodwill messages were delivered to reinforce the need for a stronger and purposeful approach to combat fake news and hate speech. We, as information and communication managers, must close ranks. If we do not come together and speak together as one group, determined to save this country from the evils of those who peddle hate speeches and fake news. We would have failed even in ourselves. We must recognize the dangers and take appropriate steps in order to make sure that we do not fall into that trap. A communique is expected at the end of the meeting. In Kaduna, Anthony Forson, NTA News. An interministerial committee on a haulage system to curb incessant accidents and the resultant human and economic losses has been inaugurated in Abuja. Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, in a message, described the carnage on the highways where human lives are wasted as unfortunate and uncalled for. Ahmed Ondas Ahmed now reports. This committee is a fallout of the Taka crash at Otedola Bridge in Lagos last June, where over 50 vehicles were burned and nine deaths recorded. The Taxis Man Committee, which is subdivided into four, is to provide a better knowledge of petroleum products from depot to their destinations nationwide. Secretary to the Government of the Federation, represented by the Permanent Secretary General Services, Olusie Guadekule, stressed the need for synergy between the transport owners and regulatory agencies in the haulage sector to reduce the carnage on the nation's highways. Um, to see that to, to get results, to see that to protect the lives of Nigerians. Um, the is concerned that valuable investments in human resources and other assets is being wasted for such uh, assets or what or other goods. The Interministerial Committee will meet time to time to review the implementation in the attempts of reference. Ahmed Ondas Ahmed, NT News. In barely 48 hours after the Independent National Electoral Commission signed a memorandum of understanding with three transport unions to deliver 2019 election materials nationwide, the National Union of Road Transport Workers has convened a National Executive Council meeting to discuss how best to deliver results. Timothy Yusuf reports. The meeting is to discuss strategy towards developing modalities for the provision of an efficient delivery of election materials in 2019, as well as to address challenges experienced in 2015. This new agreement is another giant step towards making the 2019 election better the NURTW president urged members to abide by the responsibilities spelled out in the Memorandum of Understanding. Some of our members are deeply engaged in political party activities and some may even be holding offices in political parties. Such officers will be advised not to participate in this exercise. 
He pledged the union's continued partnership with INEC in its quest to improve the electoral process in the country. In Abuja, Timothy Yusuf, NT News. President Muhammad Buhari has approved the appointment of Suleiman Hassan, a surveyor, as the Minister of Environment, following the resignation of the Minister of State, Ibrahim Usman Jibril, who left to ascend the throne of Emir of Nasarawa in Nasarawa State. A statement by the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Media and Publicity, Garba Shehu, says the President announced the succession of the Minister of Environment at the end of the Federal Executive Council meeting on Wednesday. And Jennifer is in our Lagos Network Center with more stories from that end. Good evening, Jennifer. National Peace and Reconciliation Committee of the All Progressive Congress, APC, has appealed to aggrieved aspirants and members of the party in Lagos and Ondo states to embrace peace. The chairman of the Peace and Reconciliation Committee in the Southwest Zone and governor of Bornu State, Kashim Shatima, made the plea at the State House Marina, Lagos. Nosa Usula reports. Governor Shetima, while interfacing with aggrieved aspirants in the states over the last primaries, commended Governor Ambody for the way he handled the outcome of the primary in Lagos State. What we need are genuine commitment and readiness to deliver results. Politics requires pragmatism. We must be able to dance to the changing beats. Yes, politics requires loyalty, but it also demands tolerance and compromises. Lagos State Governor Akilmi Ambody said while it was gratifying that there was no issue in Lagos, the same could not be said of Ogun State and thereby urged concerned party members in Ogun State to do the needful to ensure peace. Whatever happens in Ogun State is a reflection of what is happening in the whole of the Southwest and we're ready to make sure that this our community brings everybody back into one family fold. Governor Ambode has set a pace for a political culture that we as Nigerians should aspire to have in the future. Aside members of the committee, others at the meeting were the APC governorship candidate in Lagos State, Babajide Songwolu, amongst other top politicians in the states. In Lagos, Nusa, Osula, NTA News. Now, the Standards Organization of Nigeria has begun the mop-up of substandard lubricants across the country following the surveillance activities which revealed that most lubricants in the market failed to meet quality standards. As an enforcement exercise in Lagos, the Director General of the Standards Organization of Nigeria, Osita Abuloma, disclosed that five containers of adulterated lubricants were seized with several warehouses sealed. The seizure of the lubricants is part of the ongoing activities to mop off adulterated vehicle lubricants while the organization continues to engage market leaders towards self-regulation to ensure the products meet required standard. Isa Suleiman, coordinator, surveillance intelligence, who represented the director general, said the seizure followed a tip-off on the influx of substandard lubricants in circulation nationwide. We have five containers, five by 20, but we also have the main warehouse where we have thousands of containers. There's so many brands, virtually most of the brands of this engine oil and other lubricants were sampled and tested. Quite a number of them failed, including this particular brand you are seeing here being offloaded. Similar exercises were carried out in Kano and Jigawa, where warehouses along Maganda Road were sealed off, while in Rivers and Bayelsa, drums of branded and unbranded oil lubricants were also seized. The surveillance, which is in collaboration with Nupeng, has led to the closure of 10 warehouses within the Federal Capital Territory. In Lagos, Ruth Ario Samuel, NCA News. You're still watching NTN Network News. More reports ahead with Cyril in Abuja. But first, we'll pause for a break. Cadbury Hot Chocolate 3 in 1. A delicious combination of rich cocoa and wholesome goodness of milk. Just add hot water 
to get an instant chocolatey treat that delights your senses. Mom says we have more than enough. Wherever you may travel, whoever you will be with, we wish you a supreme Christmas. Be supreme, Nigeria. Team Huddle. But we lost. Don't be tired, guys. This isn't a loss. It's a practice for winning. Nothing makes a mother prouder than seeing her child growing up. But I know as he learns to lead, he'll face even more dirt, germs, and risk of illness. That's why in changing seasons, you need strong dental protection. Because dental protects from up to 100 illness causing germs. Growing up needs dental. Oh, now hear the angels sing. Oh, yes. It is our season of joy. Be part of Radio Nigeria, NTA, and Voice of Nigeria Annual Festival of Nine Lessons and Christmas Carols. Come and be refreshed as we showcase music from various artists. Join Deborah Energy Samuel for the Praise and Worship Session, the Can Choir, Children Choir, Instrumentals and Scintillating Solos, Radio Nigeria, NTA, Voice of Nigeria Choirs, and a host of others. We will be hosting you along with dignitaries from different parts of the country with the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshimbajo, CFR, in attendance. Our message giver shall be Reverend Israel Akonji of the First Baptist Church and can chairman of North Central Region, Nigeria. Theme, Jesus, our comforter. Date, 16th December, 2018. Venue, National Christian Center, Abuja. Time, 3 p.m. prompt. Carol Sound, powered by Vivid Vision Sound. Join Radio Nigeria, NTA, and Voice of Nigeria to commemorate the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Because of Christmas Day. Nigeria, a land of promise, land of potential, rich in oil, arable land, and solid minerals. Yet, hunger, joblessness, homelessness, and poverty are widespread. Over the years, Nigeria has suffered from hospitals without drugs, schools without teachers, and a huge infrastructure deficit. Clearly, we are yet to reach our full potential. And one of the reasons is because people choose bad leaders. Some even sell their conscience for a few thousand naira. Your future, don't buy the people's lives. Vote selling is a crime against yourself. You will spend the next four years paying for it. Vote buying is against the law. Politicians, stop buying votes. People, Stop selling your future. This message is from the National Orientation Agency. And we're back in Abuja with the rest of the news. The steps towards instituting an effective and robust tax system in the country through granting autonomy to states' boards of internal revenue are getting stronger with induction of new members of the tax board. Musa Abu Bakr reports. These are new members of the Joint Tax Board undergoing an induction course to keep them abreast to what is expected of them. Their tenure is coming at a time when Nigeria is making effort to explore alternative source of revenue. Consequently, emphasis has been accorded to strengthening the tax administration in the country in recent times. Of this training, the tax board members are expected to master their roles and policies of running the joint tax board and create the needed synergy for effective administration in the country. It will make sure that the service delivery is more efficient, it's more customer friendly, and at the end of the day, hopefully, it will generate more revenue. We have a collaboration agreement, MOU, with all the states, which one tax authority can be acting on behalf of the others and exercising those uh, responsibilities and duties imposed on any tax authority by law. Uh, we're going to learn a lot from uh, what the past 
members and officials of the JTB has been doing, uh, which will really uh, enhance our own understanding and ability, you know, to do our assignment in our respective states. While the new members are learning the rope of the trade, a gala night was organized to honor and send forth all members of the board. In Abuja, I am Musa Abubakar, NTA News. And there's more on business with Chukunonso Mwabweze, who's right here. Chukunonso. Thank you. Hello and a warm welcome to Business News. We begin by telling you that Nigeria has signed a memorandum of understanding on a $1 billion facility for Nigeria-Africa Trade and Investment Promotion Program. This was the highlight of the Nigerian Day at the ongoing Intra-Africa Trade Fair in Cairo, Egypt. Vivian Idepe for reports that the day was chaired by Vice President Yemi Oshibajo, whose address centered on the improved business environment and incentives put in place by the present administration to attract and retain investors. In the second quarter report of our Bureau of Statistics, services contributed approximately 54% to the GDP, with information and communication being the main drivers of growth. Clearly, one of the most remarkable developments in Nigeria's economic story is the phenomenal growth and depth of technology and innovation, with hundreds of new companies jostling for privacy in this fast-growing digital economy space. It's estimated that the digital economy in Nigeria would be worth 88 billion US dollars and add about 3 million jobs by 2021. So today we have come with some of our best digital entrepreneurs to exhibit their products and to start conversations around cooperation and partnerships that will jumpstart the continental economy and create our own Facebooks, our own Googles, and Amazons. We actually want to increase our, our export in terms of what we sell to the rest of the world. We also want to increase the amount of manufacturing that takes place in Nigeria, both for Africa and for the international markets. And this will increase a lot of uh, volume of inter-Africa trade. Nations worth about $25 billion are expected to be concluded at the fair, which has almost 1,100 registered exhibitors from more than 50 African countries. The equities market was bearish today, depreciating by minus 0.24% to close at 30,568.05 basis points in 2,950 deals worth $3 billion naira. Market capitalization stood at 11 trillion naira. That's business news tonight. Thanks for being there. I am Chukunonso Mwabeze. Sarah, it's back to you. Well, thank you, Chukunonso. And it's straight away to my degree as we link up with Naomi for more news. Hello, Naomi. and welcome to Meduguri. The preference for homegrown rice among consumers in Meduguri has continued to encourage more farmers key into the Uncle Borrowers program of the federal government, thereby increasing yields despite security threats. Yagum Subukar has a situation report. Foreign rice has over the years dominated markets which is consumed in large quantity across the country, thereby downplaying the purchase of homegrown rice. However, with the Buhari-led administration playing high premium to the agricultural sector, which gave rise to the resurgence of production of homegrown rice, more farmers now engage fully in cultivation of homegrown rice with the support of the Anko Borua scheme. Anko Borua in Borno is a success. In Borno State, rice is largely cultivated in Kondiga, Zabarmari, and Dusman in Jere local governments, where each farmer cultivates nothing less than one hectare of land with six to seven tons production output. This development the farmers described as unprecedented. Uncle Borrowa program assisted me. We commence 
President Muhammadu Buhari. The preference of consuming homegrown rice according to buyers and sellers cannot be overemphasized due to its natural taste. Even the NGOs, now they prefer to buy local rice. <laughs> According to them, because of its high demand, the business of homegrown rice is booming. In Mejuguri, Yagum Subukar, NTA News. The academic exchange program between University and Meduguri and University of Africa Sudan has been described as productive following the graduation of first sets of students. Memuna Garba reports. The coming of the students to University of Meduguri to undertake the three-month program at the Department of English and Literary Studies was in line with the partnership agreement reached between the two institutions last year. The Vice Chancellor, University of Meduguri, Professor Ibrahim Abubakar Njodi, had while congratulating the students, described the program as productive. For the first time, we are interacting as universities from different entities. Previous ones have been just documents, sometimes we sign them where you hardly do you hear anything. But the one of the International University of Sudan and that of the University of Nakuru is a practical one. Acting Director of Partnership Linkages and Alumni Affairs, Dr. Shehu Mustafa Libati, disclosed that two batches of staff and students of University of Meduguri have so far visited the International University of Africa, Sudan, as part of the academic exchange program. Speaking on behalf of the graduating student, Hasif Arasul Hadi was full of gratitude to the University of Maiduguri for making the program a success. In Maiduguri, Maimuna Garba, NTA News. That is it from Maiduguri. It's back to Cyril in Abuja. Thank you, Naomi. And uh, sports is next after this break. <laughs> Brought us as usual. As usual. Mm. Uh, you are welcome, sir. <laughs> as usual. Yeah. I was you, like, welcome. Yeah. 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 you take that one. Yeah. Yeah. Take that one. Yeah. 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 You don't understand. We want the Nigeria home grown rice. Finish. You don't have. You don't have. Join the rice revolution today. No other rice that tastes like Nigeria rice. Are you sorry? No, you That's chop. the Nigeria rice we are talking about. Chocolate made in Nigeria rice. Healthy food. I'm going to bring Mrs. Mubu to come to chocolate rice of milk in Nigeria here. Yeah. <laughs> and see how it I make. Correct, correct. How they are cook it. Correct. <laughs> Homegrown rice are good for your health. It will boost our economy and I give employment to our people. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. Sports now and 19th National Sports.